she died. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Those Were the Days. I guess we are watching another episode of Archie Bunker All in the Family, and we are now in Season 3. Wow, the time has flown. Now, if you guys haven't seen Season 1 or Season 2, uh, go ahead and hit that little uh, button up here if you uh, are on any devices that will let you actually hit that button up there. If not, you can go and uh, there is a channel button down there and you can go into the channel and there's a playlist for you and it should start off with the first episode or at least you can find the first episode. Uh, there's also a little subscribe button right down here I believe in this corner. So go ahead and hit that while you're at it as well, and that will let you know when I drop these videos. So this episode is one that I don't quite remember. I have seen all of the episodes of All in the Family. It's a little bit uh, foggy because the more into the middle we get, the harder it is to just remember every episode. I mean, there's quite a few episodes in this series. This one, I'll probably remember it once I start to see it, but I'm a little foggy on the details right now. But that's even better because it's like, eh, I don't even remember seeing this one. So, with that being said, let's find out what happens in this episode of All in the Family. Here we go. Those were the days. Alright, come on, off your butt and on your feet here. We got company coming. Okay, so someone's coming over. Boy, one sergeant's wife comes to visit. This place turns into an army barracks. No, not right. Army. Not army, meathead. Air force. Air force, not army. Flying out of Foggy, Italy. The, the ones, ones that, that won, won the war. war. Yes. <laughs> now let's see what this detail is doing in here. So, uh, one of Archie's military buddies are coming over. Or Navy buddies, yeah, Navy buddies is coming over for uh, dinner apparently. Why are you making such a fuss over Mrs. Loomis? Oh, right, I'm doing this for the Duke, my best buddy, the guy that saved my life. Okay. Sergeant Loomis threw himself on a live Italian for Archie. <laughs> uh, you don't need to explain that one. IED. It's an Italian grenade. Right. Okay. Some joker threw into the barracks there. See. Oh, okay. You see my little girl. If it wasn't for the Duke, you probably wouldn't be here today. Okay. Neither would I. <laughs> I mean, in this room, technically. I'd be living someplace else. Right. And Gloria would look different. Gloria wouldn't be. Gloria. What about you, Meathead? Didn't I give you a direct order? Right. The rush. He's not going to be here for at least an hour. Okay. How can the Duke still be alive if he threw himself on a grenade? Right. Of course, it was an Italian grenade. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't go off. It was a dud like everything else them Pastor Pazoo's made. <laughs> oh, okay. The point is that she's coming here for one night. we got to make a welcome. She okay. This will be the first time in 24 years we ain't slept together. Right. Well, that's the sacrifice you got to make, Edith. <laughs> <laughs> you know, probably not much of a sa sacrifice. Oh, that's great. That's good thinking there, Edith. Now maybe I want to have to talk to her too much. Right. Of course, she's about as interesting as a doorknob, you know. Okay. And uh, no, she was the type that always used to run and hide when anybody come out with a camera. Uh, okay. I'll eat it. You'd do the same thing if you was 195 pounds or four foot seven. Oh, okay. Hi! Oh, hi. Can I help you, miss? Uh, it doesn't look 147 pounds, but, you know. Mrs. Bobby Joe Loomis, Duke's wife. Oh, okay. It's Mrs. Loomis. She's lost weight and grown tall. <laughs> I got a message for you from Duke. Oh. Ooh, okay. That's uh interesting. What's the message? <laughs> Yeah, and you're not upset that some random blonde lady just kissed your husband. I knew Duke's wife walk oh. away. Right. You were expecting the first, Mrs. Loomis. I'm the second. Oh, okay. The first is deceased. Oh, 
Okay. What happened to us? She died. She died. <laughs> oh. Right? You know, I was going to ask you for your ID card. Right. All I'd have to do is remind you of those stories, like the time you two were at Madame Tallini's. Oh, okay. Sounds like a brothel. Big house near the train station. Oh, talking about a brothel. Who's Madame Tallini? <laughs> A nurse, either. <laughs> right. An air corps nurse over there. In fact, she was the head nurse, which is why they call her madam. Right. <laughs> Jeez, was I surprised? <laughs> yep, he's surprised, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Meathead's just being meathead. What are you looking at? Nothing. <laughs> the suitcase upstairs, huh? Right. Sure, Arch. <laughs> yeah, we wasn't expecting you for about an hour yet, you know. Well, I took an earlier bus. Right. Pictures of the Duke and me, Mrs. Loomis. Oh, why don't you call me Bobby Joe? Uh -huh. okay. That's a boy's name, though, huh? You don't look like no boy, though. <laughs> Barely said I do. Shipped him off to West Germany just like that. Wow, well, okay. The Air Force ain't got no human feeling at all, huh? <laughs> One of them restaurants that must have run out of roof, you know, because we're eating outside. <laughs> That's very popular in, in European countries. You eat outside a lot. <laughs> Eyes are up here, buddy. But I can't find Duke. Now, which one is he? <laughs> Archie? <laughs> You're not going to find him looking there. Right. <laughs> okay. Yeah, there, there he is. He was there all the time, yeah. Oh, but you weren't. Right. <laughs> 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 Oh boy, Michael, stocky, creepy. How long are you standing there? Right? Just got here. Sure. You never knock when you come into a room. <laughs> what do you want me to do? Knock on a banister? Right. Bump into it, make some noise, you know. Uh, dinner's ready. Uh, we all go to the table when dinner's ready. Oh. Right. Typically. I mean, most people eat in like their living room now, but you know, back then, dinner table was a thing. <laughs> What? What? <laughs> Converse nice about something here. Right? Yes, that's how I met Duke. I was working at the Burgerama. Okay. That's a drive-in on Route 27 outside of Tallahassee. Oh, okay. Tallahassee's Florida. I said to myself, Bobby Joe, you gotta have that man. Uh -huh. Standing there in my little cowgirl outfit. Okay. Had on my little cowgirl hat and... Itty <laughs> bitty red hot pants. Okay. I'll have a bowl of fun. <laughs> okay, Archie's getting a little bit too friendly here. And he just woke me up and said, honey, let's get married. <laughs> wow, okay. How romantic. That's a kind of a risque story for us here because, you know, we're kind of old fashioned. <laughs> right. I was asleep and the phone rang and it was Duke. Oh, okay. Oh! Wow. That makes a little more sense than the way that she. Hold it. Around here, the guest here. Give me that. I'll save that. <laughs> what are you looking at? Get the salad, huh? <laughs> Very uh, unusual for Archie. Archie, you ain't never helped save dinner before. Well, right. Duke was lucky to have found him. Okay, yeah. You can tell by looking at it here, fast and loose. <laughs> Oh, okay. Then I mean, that's the way it is. Nature, you know, good looking old dame. Okay. Well, listen, dames like that put thoughts in guys' heads. Okay. What kind of thoughts? <laughs> the kind of thoughts he's been having for the last, like, five minutes. I don't have no thoughts like that. <laughs> right, sure. Daddy sure is acting different. I wonder what it is. Right. I think it's his eyes. Yep. Michael, that's my father. Those things aren't on his mind. Right, sure. Gloria something is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Bobby Joe is uh, pretty well endowed. Sounds like your eyes have been working overtime, too. <laughs> <laughs> Not overtime, just a regular working day. Yeah, right. <laughs> Eight hours of looking and then I punch out. <laughs> right. I mean, she's kind of hard to miss. Gloria, little innocent lust never hurt anybody. <laughs> right. You know, your father, he doesn't know how to deal with it. How do you deal with your lust? Old shower, you know. How do you deal with your lust? 
There you go. That's funny. That's how I deal with mine. <laughs> and that's the Duke and me. We're fooling around with a couple of girls in the street in Naples. He let her have his chair. Like I was 30 years younger. Archie! What? <laughs> Why does he always stand up? He's not doing anything. Yeah, it's only 10 o'clock. Who the hell ever goes to bed at 10 o'clock? Right. You do, Archie. <laughs> Long day. It'll be very comfortable. I even brought down a special pillow. Right. You got one of those two. Oh, he's <laughs> can't even eat a cereal without a Chicago World's Fair spoon. <laughs> you know, particular. Go upstairs and get me a regular pillow, oh. huh? Really? Oh, no, I, see, I really have to get to sleep. Okay. My flight for Germany is at 8 a.m. Oh, well. No, you have been just so sweet, and I'm surely going to tell Duke just how wonderful you've been to me. Okay. <laughs> Wow. See, that's a little bit mm, wrong. Good night, Mike. Good night, Gloria. Good night. <laughs> yeah, like that. Slightly inappropriate. What are you two doing here? We live here. <laughs> Get in there. Are you going nuts or something? Yeah, a little bit. What you two seen out there? You didn't see it. Uh. You, the husband. Of course, monkey sees, monkey does. <laughs> see, and I didn't kiss that woman out there. She kissed me. Now remember that. Then forget it. Right. Okay. Just because you're feeling guilty about being attracted to Bobby yeah, Joe? Guilty. What? <laughs> yeah, I didn't kiss Bobby Joe. Bobby Joe kissed me. Uh oh. She made a pass at you? No, she didn't. Well, all right, yeah, she made a pass. Well, it's not a pass. She's just being friendly. A little over friendly, but still just friendly. It's just hard for me to believe that anybody would make a pass at you. <laughs> it wasn't a pass. She was just being friendly. Edith ain't supposed to know nothing about all that. Right, don't worry about it. Right. Well, Edith, you startled me. Sorry. Right. She spooked. I, I got something to tell you about going to bed. What's that, Edith? You're not. Uh-oh. What? Yeah, right? I don't think it's a good idea for you to sleep here tonight. Okay. I'm gonna get my things and go sleep on that couch. Right. I don't think it's a good idea for you to sleep here under the same roof with Archie. Uh, okay. I don't understand. It's something I just heard. Okay. I can't, I, I can't explain it. There you can. Never in my whole life have I ever asked anybody to leave uh, my house. Okay. And if I stay here another minute, I'm gonna cry. Right. That's all. Please. Okay. Hey, what's going on, Bobby Joy? Where are you going with the suitcase? Right. Don't you know? Your wife asked me to leave. Right. She said it was something she heard when she was down here a little while ago. Right. Something you said. You wouldn't happen to know what she heard. Right. Your wife thinks I have a thing for you. Right. Why does she think that? Did she say that? She didn't have to. Yep. Nobody's gonna know about this except you, me, and Duke. Right. Hey, Edith, come down here. We don't want to talk to you, huh? Right. Better clear the air now. I want I want to talk to you, Edith, but out in the kitchen. You stay here. I don't go nowhere. See. She's going to leave while they're talking, I'm sure. Is it true what I heard you tell the kids? Right. Kissed you and made a pass at you? No. Well, Edith, yes and no. What does that mean? <laughs> yes, she kissed me. No, there's no pass. Yes, she kissed me, but it wasn't no pass. Right. But see, a, a pass is a tricky thing, Edith. You, okay. You, you, you never know. <laughs> you never know. No, that because you ain't a man of the world like me, you see. Right. But I'm out there every day amongst them in a smelting pot of New York, you know. Smelting pot. And I know all about passes. I mean, I get them every month, 10, 20. Right, okay. You don't know what goes on in them subways. <laughs> see, like this here. It's a question. Okay. Sometimes a person is looking at you, and then sometimes a person is looking at you. See? <laughs> Might be mistaken about what Bobby Joe did. Right. I gotta apologize. She's gone. Yep. What's she gonna think of us? Right. What's she gonna tell Duke? What's the Duke gonna think of me? Right. Must have been very hard for you. Bit. <laughs> Wait, you ain't got no idea. <laughs> you done the best you could. Well, I always do, ain't it? <laughs> That's the kind of guy I am. Right, you know. Archie, it's 1.30. Kind of late. Still worrying about what the Duke will think? Yep. Just remembering that Italian grenade. Right. The one the Duke threw himself on to save your life? Mm hmm yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if he knew that that was a dud all the time. <laughs> okay, and that is it. Let's talk about it. 
All right, that was all in the family, or as I like to call it, those were the days. Interesting episode, uh, kind of ended on kind of a sore note, if you will. They got over it, but Bobby Joe's not going to be the same. And uh, the Duke, well, he might not be so understanding, but I'm not sure if we ever get to that resolution. So with that being said, this episode was pretty interesting. Of course, Archie, you know, has a friend coming over, thinks that it's going to be this other lady. Apparently that lady died. Uh, they did mention something uh, during their interaction that I found kind of interesting, which was one, uh, World War II, yes, there was a lot of brothel stuff. Even in the Civil War, there was a lot of brothel stuff. It wouldn't surprise me if Archie has been a time or two to the House of the Rising Sun, uh, and yes, that is what that song is about, but um, it is uh, pretty interesting because he said that it was near a train station, which actually makes sense because most brothels way back in the day when they first started in America would be uh, near train stations and, um, you know, cities that had train stations would typically have brothels. And the reason why, if you've ever heard the term the red light district, is because when the train people stopped, they would take their little light, which was red, and go to the brothel and hang it up outside of the door or the, you know, outside of the building. And that's why it became known as the Red Light District. Now, whether or not that's actually, like, factual, that's what I've heard. If you know something else about why it's called the Red Light District, let me know in the comments. But that's at least what I've heard is because when the train masters would come in, They'd go to the brothel, they bring their red light with them and hang it up outside. And that's typically what I know about why it's called the red light district. Um, but again, if you know anything else, let me know in the comments. It's, it's just kind of a fun fact for you. Um, other than that, you know, they looked at a lot of pictures. Um, she kissed him right off the door. Okay, so getting into that issue, the main issue at hand here is that Archie took her, let's say, flirtatious uh, nicety as a come on, which if you've never met someone who's friendly like that, then you don't understand what's actually going on. There are some people who are just kissers. They just do that. Some people are huggers. They just do that. They don't mean anything forward by it. It's just something that they kind of do. Um, it's kind of a nicety. Larry Appleton, that's me. Larry, Larry, Larry! <laughs> Who are you? <laughs> there are people that will flirt with you even though they're not actually flirting with you. It just it's something that people do and it makes it um, confusing, sure. Um, but there are people out there and if you've never met one you can you can get confused on the motive of what they're doing. Most people either flirt or maybe kiss as either, a formality or a nicety. There are people that will talk to you and and react in a different way that seems more flirtatious, but they're just being nice. Uh, some people just kiss because they just kiss, and that's uh, something that Archie didn't understand, and it became a big issue. <laughs> so yes, uh, Archie not understanding that some people kiss because it's just something that they do um, moved into. Michael the Meathead giving him the death stare, <laughs> which I understand, you know, hey, maybe you shouldn't be doing that, especially since Michael was one of the people who didn't understand that uh, nature. So it's pretty interesting to see that happen. Of course, Michael uh, kept doing it, and he's like, nothing. <laughs> Just got here. And he kept trying to rein uh, Archie in. And of course, Archie likes the attention. She is a good looking lady. They do explain a lot of stuff in this episode. The whole, yeah, she's an attractive lady, the whole thing. And it's just, uh, it went a little bit too far without someone saying time out. 
I'm not used to this, what's going on here? Because I can see how that can be confusing if you're not uh, around people who are kissers or flirtatious, uh, friendly flirtatious. It can be very confusing on, on that dynamic, okay, do they like me? Are they actually attracted to me? Or are they just being nice? You know, it's very rare to find people like that anymore, but you, you do. It's kind of one of those just man up and ask like are you hitting on me or are you just being nice and of course the kissing only happened twice so it was mainly archie that i can blame here because he was looking where he shouldn't be looking <laughs> and he kind of wound himself up on his own uh on his own basically so yeah, it was pretty interesting, and then, of course, he was talking to the kids, because the kids started to catch on, and then uh, Edith uh, heard that, got upset, naturally, because she thinks something fishy's going on, so, of course, she's going to get upset, and that's understandable completely, and then uh, Archie had to sit down and think about what actually happened. And then he had the light bulb moment of, oh, maybe she just kissed me because she's friendly. Maybe I just put all this stuff in my own head because it feels good to be liked, I guess, or flirted with. You know, pretty lady, kind of flirtatious, but in a friendly way. So, yeah. Uh, he kind of ate his own shoe on that one. It's just sad that she left before they both could come to the realization of, oh, she was just being friendly, not flirtatious, and this is why you should always sit down and just have a very frank conversation with whoever you have an issue with because it's not worth losing a friend over. He could have very well have lost his friend the Duke because of this whole situation, which would be pretty sad. So, all in all, this episode was a little more situational, not so much comedy, but there was flakes of comedy added in, their typical sarcasm, their typical uh, Edith being Edith, and, you know, their typical awkward nature is funny, but the situation itself is pretty serious, which I can I can um, appreciate because it gives the show a little bit more variety than just oh we you know get stuck in a situation uh, of this type that's funny. This one really wasn't a, a funny situation. It was humorous, but it wasn't. Funny because if you look at it from a real life perspective, this could have went really badly for Archie and Edith. But it's still a good episode, and I do like that they gave Archie and the family a little more of a levity on on their life. So all in all, I would say a good episode. This uh, series has become pretty interesting over the last uh, two seasons now entering into our third so i hope that you guys enjoy it if you do go ahead and give this video a like uh if you really like it go back and watch the first season second season and if you really have already done that and you really like this episode think about hitting that little subscribe button don't worry about it you're still in good shape all you got to do is just tap it in just tap it in there will be a subscribe button at the end of the video. There should be one like right down here somewhere for you. I do thank all of my subscribers. You guys are really helping out with the channel. I know that uh, taking a month long break supposedly hurts channels, but I like getting caught up. I have had some copyright issues getting these videos out and taking that month off helps get these uh, videos uh cleared so you guys can watch them to the fullest as much as YouTube lets you watch anything. I do want to remind you guys that if you want the whole series, there is a uh, Amazon associate link down in the description that should, if it's still active, I believe it is, should take you to the Amazon website. And if you use that, that helps me out because I'm 
get a little percentage of that once it hits a certain amount. So that helps the channel out. If you guys want the entire series on DVD, that is down there. If you guys want to watch it for free, though, it is on Amazon Prime if you're a Prime member for free. And it's also on an app called Freevee. Um, if you're in the U.S., uh, I, it's on your Roku and your phone. I'm not sure about Canada or any of the other countries that watch, but it is uh, on our websites at least. So if uh, you guys want to do that, those are your options to watch for free other than watching channels like mine. So I do want to thank all of my subscribers. I do want to thank you guys for getting this far in the video, and we will see you next time. Peace. Thank you.